Anyway, basically, that's a beautiful quote. It is. It really is. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's other things that. There's another quote from Paul Davis, who is, who I know, I've met a few times at conferences actually. Recent discoveries about the primeval cosmos advise us to accept that the expanding universe has been set up with an corroboration of astonishing precision. Mm. The impression of design is overwhelming. <laughs> or what about Pe what about Penrose's famous um, Penrose? You know, he's, a, he's, he's another physicist at Cambridge, actually. Um, this tells us how precise the creator's aim must be. Um, must, must have been, namely to an accuracy of one part in 10 to the 123. This is an extraordinary figure. One could not possibly, you know, you, you, you know right. what a big figure is anyway. Um, and in other words, basically what he's saying is that the fine tuning of the universe to have stars and planets and, you know, a world which is not chaotic, you have to get everything right, if you like that. That's why Hoyle makes that statement. That, you, know, it's, you, it's you, you already blew the mind. You didn't need 123 zeros. Yeah. You yeah. far you far exceeded the limit of, yeah. of the mind to conceive. Oh, you can't conceive. It. You can't. But you can't conceive anything in this realm. It's amazing. I mean, for instance, you know, when, one once some time ago, I was in West Australia. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's there's some very primitive algae in West Australia called stromolites. They're they're little they little they make little rocks in the sea coast, right, in the hot hot salty sort of tidal intertidal zone, right. And you can stand there and you can watch the tide coming in over them today, right? And you can go a few miles out and there's some fossil stromolites, right? And they've been dated at about 3.8 billion years, right? 3.8 billion years. That's a sub substantial fraction of the entire time the cosmos has been here, right? And it's amazing to think that the seas of the Earth and the temperature of the Earth has remained within a pretty narrow le 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 band for nearly 4 billion years. Mm -hmm. The oceans have washed against the shores for four billion years. It's, it's, this, is, this is engineering. Yeah. This is engineering. You think of how difficult it is to keep your house going for 20 years, right? Exactly. exactly. Fancy, fancy keeping the temperature, fancy keeping oceans and salts and sea constant for four Well, years. that's how you know that there is a two-way communication system, yeah. too. Yeah. So how are you going to maintain this delicate balance? We know in the nervous system there's an afferent and efferent system in the mm. body that maintains itself in existence. Yes. Yes. So there has to be a two-way communication system somehow operating to maintain what you just said. Well, yes, basically, of course, this is why James Lovelock proposed the Gaia hypothesis, that the Earth is a living entity, it has which to be. corrects itself. It has to be. <laughs> I'm nearly convinced by this. Um, yeah, but you know what I mean? Yes, right. I agree. I mean, I, I mean, well, it has a resonance. They already yeah. know it has I mean, a wavelength. So it has a wavelength that's obviously yeah. alive if you can measure it. It has. Well, yeah, I mean, Lovelock was, in fact, you know, one of the leading NASA climatologist, right, and he planned the sort of, you know, the Viking thing to Mars and all that sort of stuff, but then he was walking along the shores of his native island one day, looking out for the Atlantic Ocean, and he suddenly had the idea that the Earth is a living organism, right, you know, this is the ancient Greek conception of Gaia, you know, the mother, mother, goddess, or the anima mundi, the same mm -hmm, sort of thing, mm -hmm. right, uh, it's a vitalist idea, that, of course, that the Earth is alive, mm -hmm. and um, he suddenly thought that the only way you could explain the constancy of things was, you know, by presuming that the Earth is alive and regulating itself. And so that was uh, James Lovelock. 